Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Julie Tennille. I'm the Principal Investigator and Project Director for the Health Resources and Services Administration Behavioral Health Workforce and Education Training Grant that thankfully we've rebranded re EPIC. EPIC is an easier acronym and stands for Education and Programming for Integrated Care. We are dropping into your department, your open house, just to kind of um, invite you to join us for some town halls at the end of the semester to get some questions answered, to hear more granular detail about what could be a great opportunity for you here at Westchester University and for your career. But I also want to give a nod to my brilliant and dear colleague and program coordinator for this grant, Wendy Myers. Wendy and I work very closely together and um, I couldn't do this without her. She's really just a terrific resource. You'll get to know her if you become a part of this EPIC program, if you don't already know her. So just kind of quickly an overview of what I plan on addressing for the next few minutes, but I'm gonna give a bit of an overview, a grant overview. Um, we have some history with this grant, which is really exciting. And then I'll talk about the qualifications of the field sites. There are very particular field sites that if you're interested in applying for a stipend from this grant, that those, those qualifications will need to be met. And that's something that we don't have a lot of say in, but we wanna make that very clear before you undertake any kind of effort. We'll also talk about qualifications of you as students. So there are just certain aspects of um, where you are in the program, you know, again, whether you're going to be in a, a qualified field site and, you know, you're also going to be competing for these stipends. So you'll be submitting um, an application that I'll just touch on a little bit later. We'll get into much more detail when we have the town halls later in the semester. And then in exchange for what would be a stipend award that you would get if you did compete for and earn the stipend, we have requirements from you that will immerse you in integrated care and um, expose you to a lot more interprofessional education than you might typically get in other programs at Westchester University. And, um, and I'll get into some of those details in a bit. I'll also show a slide that has detail about the town halls that we're offering at the end of the semester. And finally, there's a slide that gives my contact information. It gives Wendy Myers's contact information. And it also provides liaison specific contact information, depending on whether you are coming from the MSW program or the MED school counseling program, or you're in the doctoral and psychology program. We have some history here. We had a $1.6 million grant that Dr. Nadine Bean wrote uh, in 2017. And uh, when she decided to retire a little bit earlier, she turned the grant over to me to be the project director and principal investigator for the fourth and final year, which was last year. And then working closely with uh, the team and colleagues from MED School Counseling and Doctorate in Psychology programs and MSW programs, um, we applied for in January and we learned in the summer that we did get what, what's called a competing continuation grant. So we have another 1.9, almost $2 million to give mostly in the form of stipends to eligible students through this uh, funding mechanism, through HRSA. And essentially what the grant is about this time around, it's slightly different. Um, we still focus on the um, incredible value of interprofessional education where two or more professions are learning and working alongside each other like nursing and social work or law and psychology and social work, um, just sort of enriching the understanding that folks have of these different disciplines and how we can work in teams to bring better outcomes to the client populations that we encounter. But we are, in addition to kind of keeping, keeping on with that same spirit and focusing on interprofessional education and integrated care, this grant is focused on a certain population. We are only 
working with students who are in behavioral health settings um, that are serving children, adolescents, and transitional aged youth in high need, um, in high need areas. And one of the coolest things, of course, about this particular grant um, at Westchester University is that we get to give money out to students that through this competitive application process can earn $10,000 if you're in a master's program and in your, you're in your final practicum year, your final internship, or $25,000 if you're in the doctoral program and you're working toward your PsyD. And that's really amazing for so many reasons, right? So you're, these are unrestricted funds for you. Like after you get that money, we don't say you need to spend it on fill in the blank. You, you can pay off a credit card bill, you can quit a part-time job, you can decide whatever you wanna, you can buy like a lot of ice cream or something. Like you can do whatever you want with this money. It's your money. And that's just kind of amazing because you know best what you need um, this money for. But we have found that it does allow students to focus a little bit more conservatively on their education and that's amazing. So I kind of mentioned, touched on the goal of the grant, like we need to really beef up our behavioral health workforce when it comes to serving children and adolescents and transitional aged youth in high need areas. We don't have the capacity to be able to really, um, without waiting lists, be able to serve these children in need. And that's the main and very simple goal of the grant. We'll talk more about this at town halls, we'll give some examples of where some of our current students are and they're in their first year of the newly funded grant. But we have really specific qualifications for field sites. And this is something that we're not, we didn't have any say in, but it's, it's really important that you're clear and that you understand that in your final practicum year, in order to be eligible, you have to be working directly and primarily with this population, with these kids and adolescents and transitional aged youth. You can't be working in a policy think tank or in a law firm or in some other setting where you're not having any contact with, with these children. So we don't, um, and HRSA won't allow for macro placements. So qualifications of for you, and I mentioned, um, but it's always worth hitting on again, that you have to be entering your final field placement before graduation and completing the placement in the contiguous fall and spring semesters of the 2022 and 2023 academic year. So if you earn the stipend, you would start with us in late August of 2022, and then you would be done and graduating in 2023. You also have to be referred and interviewed or accepted to a qualified field site before um, the application submission deadline. Um, and you'll know about these dates as we can kind of nail them down. Also, HRSA requires that you be a US citizen, US national or foreign national who possesses a visa permitting permanent residence in the US, Individuals on temporary or student visas are not eligible. And again, we don't have a lot to say about that. Obviously, we're not gonna give you $10,000 or $25,000 for nothing, right? So we're requiring a certain discrete kind of set of, of activities from you to enrich your education so that you can understand in great depth what is interprofessional education. Why should you even care about it? What is integrated health or integrated care? And how can it enrich you as someone who's graduating with this behavioral health degree? How can it like supercharge you when you go to look for a job? And why will you be probably more valued as someone on the job market? So here's what you have to do. Obviously you have to successfully complete your field placement. You also have to complete an elective on advanced clinical practice and integrated health. This is a course that I co-teach with a nutrition professor, Patricia Davidson. And the cost of the class is not covered by the grant. The other thing that you need to make sure that you understand is that you have to attend all four of our two hour interprofessional education trainings. 
through the EPIC program, the Education and Programming and Integrated Care program. There are always two in the fall and there are two in the spring. So as stipend recipients, you would have to attend all four of these training events because we also require that you take pre and post surveys. This isn't just kind of a stipend delivery type of grant. We, we're also collecting data and analyzing the data that we collect from you. But HRSA also asks us to collect information on cohorts of ours that have graduated in the past so that they can understand how impactful this particular program is for you in terms of your success in your career. We think that's really important. So you're signing on to fulfill these, um, these items and we'll go over this information again when we have the town hall. We ask that you don't apply if you're unable to adhere to the requirements because you know that would just be a waste of your time. And um, we just wanna make sure that you understand what the requirements are on that previous slide before you consider applying. As I mentioned, these are the upcoming town halls that we're holding. So Wendy and I will be holding space on Monday, November 29th from 12 to one, kind of a lunchtime situation where we'll show some slides again on some of these, um, some of the aspects of, um, of what I've talked about. And we'll get a little bit more into the weeds, but more importantly, we'll be able to answer your questions and, and we wanna hear your comments and we wanna hear how you're thinking about this. The other town hall that we're holding is on Wednesday, December 1st, 2021. This is an evening event, evening town hall. So if you work during the day or if you've got classes or something like that during the day, um, it's just a different kind of window that hopefully is accessible to you. These are remote events. Um, and again, we welcome any questions that you have for us. And then finally, this is the contact information for, um, for, for me and for Wendy Myers. And also um, just to note, these are the field directors from the MSW program, Melissa Dietzik and Lena Smith, Melissa on the Westchester campus, Lena on the Philly campus, and Garbo Goodkin, who is from MED School Counseling, and Deanne Zotter from the Doctoral in Psychology program. These are also really important resources for you um, if you wanted to touch base with them. They have information too, and we do a lot of really wonderful collaboration and are so excited that this grant round, we have the psychology department involved with us too. That's been really, really, really fantastic. So thank you for your time. And um, please again, reach out um, if you've got questions um, and for sure attend those town halls that we're, we're gonna be holding. Thanks everyone.